facial reconstructive surgeon from Ghana. When you focus on it and you can put someone's face back together, it's a powerful thing. Um, I don't see myself doing anything else. Dr. Kofi Boeni is at the forefront of incredible surgical procedures, from removing tumours around the brain to correcting paralysis, deformities and trauma to the face. He's transforming lives around the world. And this week he shares his story on African Voices. There are a lot of children in Africa just like me, probably more talented, looking for the opportunities. I got one. And I'm hoping that this, they here and this, would encourage them not to give up. So this patient is a, is a very interesting story. I'm going to risk scrub. We're going to take some cartilage from the rib to help build the nose up. So that's what we'll do today. I'm originally from Ghana and right now work at Johns Hopkins. Been here for since 2005. And mostly do otolaryngology, head and neck surgery, but my focus is in facial reconstructive surgery. But what it means is um, the ear, nose, throat, things around the head and the neck. So whatever you can think about around the eye, the, under the brain, the nose, the sinuses, things that diseases that people are born with in this area or people acquire in this area. And it's a very common area to see diseases, simple as sinus infection, the sore throat, but com more complicated as a tumor that's kind of creeping into the brain or tumors that makes the face not move, paralyzes the face. She has to walk around pulling her cheek like that so she can breathe. So we want her to be able to breathe today. So we have it ready. Oh, ready to go? We're just waiting. <laughs> I'm the last person in my family who thought I was going to be a doctor. But when I was growing up, I always wanted to be a pharmacist. I don't know why. Um, uh, we, I couldn't stand the sight of blood. So I was the last person who you ever think would do surgery. But now it's not an issue for me because I think I'm helping people. You see how it's straight here, by curves here? Because the septum is curved, yeah. and I put the curve to the septum. But if we do it, the nose will be crooked. As I was training as a head and neck surgeon, most of the things that we took, took care of are cancers that grew up in the face. And I realized that we can cure people, but they look disfigured. And they will always tell you, um, how long do I have to live? And you tell them, when we cure you, you have a long life to live. But the most important question that people usually ask is, how am I going to look? Would I scare my grandchildren? And so after I learned to really take care of tumors, I, I felt, you know, we need to be able to put people back together. And every little incision that you do leaves a scar that you can't hide with makeup easily. So you have to be very, very careful what you do. Um, things are very compact in the head and neck region. One small thing affects multiple things. So it's that challenge to know precisely what you're doing that really keeps us innovating all the time. Can we have another one? The face is such an, an intricate part of a, the human culture that when it's out of place, the interactions just really end. And so when you focus on it and you can put someone's face back together, it's a powerful thing. Um, I don't see myself doing anything else. So we, we're done with the surgery. Everything went very well as planned, no surprises. Um, a little bit scarring inside the nose, um, but not too much. So overall, we, we're happy with the outcome. It looks good and she should be able to breathe very well. I like doing surgery. I mean, I have, we have fun doing okay, surgery. But the best time of my day is when the surgery is over and you walk to go tell the family that everything went well. The way that you pinch yourself to make sure it's really you, knowing my upbringing, um, the opportunities that were open to me, I am amazed I am where I am. Not a week goes by that I don't get an email from a student who tells me, you know, I read your story, I saw a video on you, it really encouraged me to really push forward. These pictures 
old pictures. I've, I've saved them for a while. I would say my family was middle class. I was born in Accra, which is the capital. Grew up uh, all my life. I went to boarding school from the age of 10 till 18. I was tiny. My parents had always encouraged me about really education. So this is my fifth birthday. And the gift that I had for birthday is a set of encyclopedia. <laughs> and there's an interesting twist to that. I read about the Mayo Clinic in this encyclopedia. And I remember telling my parents, when I grew up, I want to work there. I didn't even know what the Mayo Clinic was, um, but it happened. The thing that made me change my mind to become a physician was when we were in high school, in boarding school, one of my classmates went on a joyride with a motorbike on campus and got into an accident on campus. And we thought he was going to die. So here we were, 17 year olds. We carried him to the closest hospital. And when we got there, there was no help for him. So young children trying to take care of their classmate. And I remember on that day telling myself, I'm going to come back and I'm going to change this in this country. My dad had a physician friend who had trained in Russia and said, you know, I think your son can apply for the Russian scholarships. So I did. Здравствуйте. I mean, Здравствуйте it means um, like hello when you meet some, somebody. Or как дела means uh, how are you. Хорошо uh, means very good. And then at the end of the first year, I did very well. So they said, you will be a very good vet. I said, but that's not what I want to do. No, your scores are so good, you will do very well in veterinary medicine. So I ended up going to veterinary medical school, one of the best vet schools in, in Russia. This is one of the few things that I brought from Russia with me, my student ID. I look at it and I couldn't believe that I was that little at one time. This is 1991 from Moscow. It's the only thing in my passport that left with me from Moscow. When I was in Russia, I had traveled to Germany on just a vacation, and there was a palace coup. That's when Boris Yeltsin was the president. So there were armored cars everywhere in Moscow. I got calls from my friends in um, Moscow, don't come back because it wasn't safe. So I left everything in my apartment, didn't pick up anything, left my staff at the train station, got on the train, went to Poland, flew to London, and then eventually to the US. In the United States, Kofi pursued his medical dreams and eventually got into a university in the state of Arkansas for undergraduate studies. They were looking for a Russian language tutor, like in this language lab. And here I was an African who can speak Russian. So that was one of the first jobs I got on campus and that's how I paid um, my tuition. So I was working as a Russian language tutor. It was the beginning of a long journey in medicine. Kofi had the grades and the passion to go on, but struggled with finances to finish his medical education. One day I was um, walking home and um, my chemistry teacher was just jogging by. So he sees me and stops me and says, hey Dirk, how are things going? Fine. What are you going to do next year? So I'm not sure. He said, didn't you get admitted into med school? I said, yes. So why are you not going to go? I said, I can't find the money. So he said, you can't find the money? I said, I need someone to sign a loan for me. He said, okay. Um, do you have the loan forms? I said, yes. He said, why don't you go get it and meet me here? I haven't run as fast as that ever in my life. So I ran to my apartment, got the papers, ran back and met him. And then he picked, it up, picked the papers up and said, I have to talk to my wife to see if I, we can do this. And so I just prayed, God, let, let the wife agree. So they went home and then called me back the next day and said, we are happy to co-sign this for you. It was one of my number one priority to make sure that I honored the promise that I gave him, made sure that I made him proud, and be in a position to help somebody else. In 1999, Kofi graduated from a medical college in Nashville, Tennessee. He continued his training at Mayo Medical School in Minnesota and in 2005 became a facial plastic and reconstructive surgeon at Johns Hopkins School of Medicine. One of the best moments in my career that I've ever had was a four-year-old 
who was born with paralysis. And one early morning, I got an email. You could tell, it was like 3 a.m. in the morning. The dad sent me an email and said, for the first time in my life, I can see my son smile. And this must have been like three, four months after, after the surgery. This dad found my chemistry teacher who helped co-sign my loan to go to medical school, found him online, called him to thank him for what he had done for me. Because of what he did, his son got better. Then that's a full circle. Now, Kofi Boeni is giving back in Ghana, his native home, and beyond. There are a lot of children in Africa just like me, probably more talented, looking for the opportunities. I got one. And I'm amazed by how far it's carried me. And to me, I have to be a role model to all those children. I have to be able to kind of carry back to that continent the things that I've learned. And it's really the next phase of my life, what I want to really do.